everyone, it's Alice McNails, uh, Miley's brand ambassador. Welcome to the third instalment of Stay In and Skill Up. Um, in this video, I'm gonna do a little introduction to nail art, and I'm gonna start off with showing you um, what's in my toolkit, basically, and what I use the most. Um, so I've got a palette, so obviously it's really handy for putting your colors on uh, for when you're doing your nail art. Some little um, prep and wipe and a little dampener dish um, if there's any bits you need to clean up. Um, a dotting tool. This is basically um, a metal tool that normally comes with a larger and a smaller end and you normally buy these in like a pack. And these are great for doing lots of different designs, um, you know, polka dots and stuff especially, but also you can do tips with them. Um, you can do little hearts. Um, there's actually quite a lot of things you can do with that little tool. Um, I then like to have a little selection of cleanup brushes. So I have a sort of like round headed one and then a flat headed one and you know these are great for um, removing mistakes um, but also for getting like your lines straighter and stuff or if you want to fill in um, a block of colour. Um, nail art brushes, so my go to is this size 5 brush. Um, it's an ultra, I don't know if you can see that, it's an ultra thin brush end. Um, so great for doing detail. It's a bit more of, I suppose, advanced brush to use, but with, with practice, I think most people can learn to use that. This one's a size seven, so it has like a little bit of a um, longer brush. Um, so this is better for doing sort of like stripes and longer lines, details. And then I like to have a slightly, um, chunkier small brush as well um, just for doing sort of parts where I need to fill in bigger areas and also very handy are some tweezers I think these are actually made for eyelashes but um, they're very handy if you're using decals and stuff I've then picked out a sort of range of bits and pieces that you might have around the house which is sort of like my sort of like nail art hack things um, so when I first started doing nails, I started with leopard print and this is what I used to use. I used to basically use a Kirby grip, which I sort of would bend out like this and then just use the end like I would a dotting tool. So if you've got any lying around, that works really well. Um, also a matchstick, um, which I've covered in no wipe top coat and then I've hold it, held it in my lamp just so it's all sealed in and it's not porous. That works really good as a larger dotting tool. Um, these are really good for detail, wooden cuticle stick. Um, if you need to do any like little eyes on something um, or little fine detail bits, the end of that and I just, just basically sort of blunt the edge a bit to use it. And then sponges. This is great for doing ombres. Um, this is just your kitchen sink sponge. And then I've also got a makeup sponge which works quite well as well. So the first design I'm gonna show you is gonna be cow print, which is quite an easy one to learn. Um, how I prep my nails for nail art is I've done two coats of color. This is Girl About Town. And then I do a layer of top coat, no wipe top coat, and then I just lightly buff the surface with my white block. And that's all you need to do really, just to give it a little bit of a matte surface. I'm gonna do a two-tone cow print. And I'll show you using a couple of different bits. So normally I would use either my brush or um, my dotting tool. I'm gonna start with using Chocolate Delight. And you're basically just gonna do some sort of uneven blobs. So that works quite well. You can always use a little brush as well, like this. Like my personal preference would use a little brush because I feel like you can get a bit more of a, a sort of natural shape to your cow print, like so. And I'll show you with the Kirby grip. So you also want to do like some little dots and stuff. Like so, and then the match is good, say if you want to do some sort of bigger areas, I'll do a big bit down here, 
Um, and then you've also got your cuticle pusher, which is really good for when you want to do the really tiny little dots, like such. Now it all works well, but I think if I was going to choose, I'd probably use the dotting tool is probably the easiest. So I'm going to use a little bit of dark brown on the edges. So that's welly boots I'm using. Just gives it an extra dimension. Nice, so I'm just going to use my brush and I'm going to use a little bit of uh, black as well in there. This makes a sort of more sort of, what I would say is like a natural looking cow print. Cute. And I'm just going to use my cuticle pusher to do a couple more little dots. These little dots just make it look, I feel like, a bit more realistic and brings it sort of to life. And a few little lighter bits. So I'm just using Earthy Vibe. There we go. And then I'm just going to give that a cure for 60 seconds. So here we go, finished. As you can see, it's sort of like a mixture of colours in that one. And I've just given it a top coat, no wipe top coat. So now I'm going to show you ombre. So I've done the same as did before. Uh, this is two layers of Stand By Me Pink. And then I've top coated it in no wipe top coat and then given it a little light buff with my white block. Dust off any dust. And I'm gonna use my kitchen sponge to do this. Um, you might wanna use some tweezers to hold on to the sponge um, or just hold your fingers. And I've popped a bit of Be Yourself on this palette, which is this really nice neon orange. One of my favorites. So, Get a little corner and you just want to get in your paint, wipe off the excess and just sort of sponge on like this. So quite thick at the bottom and then when you get to the higher bits you might even want to get like a tissue, get off some of the excess just lightly tap it on the higher bit so you get a bit more of a blend, like so. And even getting the cleaner bit, just tap off some other bits. Just get that blend real nice. So I've got hardly any paint on there at the moment. I'm literally just using it to sort of blend it then going back in with a clean bit a bit higher up and then cure that for 30 seconds and then we'll do a, another layer there we go that's cured again a little bit of paint on the sponge make sure you tap off the excess tap 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 a little bit thicker at the bottom and then I'm gonna cure that again. So it's a little bit of an extra step. I've mixed a bit of base coat with a little bit of the pink, Stand By Me pink. I've got a little brush. I've made a sort of very thin sort of consistency. And I like to do this because it just um, helps it all blend together a lot. So I start at the top with my mix. And then mix a little bit more base coat so it's really sheer. And I just sort of go over that baseline basically. Like so. Wipe the brush off. And 
And this is, oh, I'm using is an ombre brush, but what you can do is, can you see it? Um, is you can trim your bristles in a normal brush, um, just so it's a little bit thinner. Um, just chop it down a bit and then I just, you can use this with any sort of little brush. This one will work as well. It's just lightly pat it down. So you're basically just blending it into the neon. And you can even use like your little finger a little bit as well to get a little bit of blend. Okay, like so. Then I'm just gonna cure that really quickly. You can cure that for 15 seconds because it's um, just base coat with a little bit of color so it will cure super fast. So there's the ombre, which looks really, really nice. Um, really makes a difference um, doing that extra step of um, diluting some of like the top color to blend it. But yeah, I've just given it a top coat with top and white and you can see it's a really nice, really nice blend that one. So now I'm going to show you something that's a bit more of an intermediate design, uh, but it is probably the one I get asked about the most, which is flames. So I have prepped this nail with Guilty Pleasure, two coats, and then I've done a layer of top coat, a no white top coat, and then I've buffed it. And I'm going to do my flame in pink. So for this, um, I use my detail brush in my size five. And my sort of rule of thumb for this is sort of do straight line up the middle, like so. And then I sort of curve this one round to give me the basic shape. Because I basically do a sort of fork flame in the middle, um, two flames either side. So there we go, so that's the sort of shape you want. It's a bit like a mouth, I suppose. And then, you sort of do a, a sort of hourglass shape, I suppose. It's like a little bowl at the top of the tree. So, come out. And then, I go in and then out again. So a bit of an S shape. And then I do it on the other side as well. So that's how you get that bowl shape. And then this one goes out again, but not as high up as the first one. I feel like it looks best when there is always one taller than the other. And fill it in. And then we take these ones on the side up and they don't go as high as our main flame. They just go around like that, little S's. bottom bit. If you've got a wider nail sometimes you might want to add a few extra flames on the side just to sort of fill the space out. If it's on a thumb maybe. Might make this guy a little bit taller. Mm 
and when you have got to grips with this you can even outline it in another colour which looks really nice. This would look really cool if it was like outlined in white, it would just sort of like really make it pop. But there you go, that's how I do my flames. There we go, and I should give that a 60 second cure. To clean all your brushes as well, just dip them in a little bit of um, prep and wipe and then with a tissue, just pull them down like so. let's say the bristles are fat, prat, uh, flat and pull it through the tissue and then you can sort of reshape them and if they are starting to lose their sh shape a bit you can put a little bit of cuticle oil on the end just to smooth out the bristles. Same with the thin brushes, just be really careful with these because you don't want to pull on the hairs too much. But yeah, clean them after every use. Same with the sponge. And just dab it out on a tissue to get all the colour out, like so. So I hope you enjoyed learning these designs, guys. Um, you can pause this video, re-watch it, um, try all these uh, designs out. Um, I hope you found this interesting. Um, join us next week for the next video instalment. Um, if you try the designs out, please do tag me in them. I love seeing it when you try these. Um, my Instagram is at AliceMCNails. Um, but yeah, stay in and skill up with Miley. And thanks for watching, guys.